Hey everyone, how's it going? So I've done a ton of Generation 1 runs, but I wanted to see what a Generation 2 itemless run would be like, and I wanted to pick a Generation 2 Pokemon, you know, makes sense. And obviously I picked Shuckle, because I figured Shuckle would be the worst Pokemon to use for a solo run. I mean, Shuckle's stats, well, they're interesting. It has the best defense and special defense in the entire game. However, it has the worst speed, the second worst attack, a tie with Magikarp, and the worst special attack. Like I said, unique stats, and in a game where speed and attack tend to be overvalued, having a Pokemon that has a combined base total of 15 for both? I thought that would be really tricky. Additionally, if we look at Shuckle's level up moves, its strongest attack it learns, and I'm not kidding about this, RAP. 15 base power. Seriously, I could not handpick a worse Pokemon for a solo challenge. There is one thing that works out in our favor. Faulkner vs. Brock is definitely a step down in difficulty by a huge margin. I mean, I don't expect it to be easy, but it's way easier than a Geodude or Onix. That being said, I can't even make it past the two mandatory trainers in Faulkner's gym until level 13. Now that we have, we can finally take on Faulkner. And the battle goes rather poorly. You see, Faulkner's first Pokemon, Pidgey, yeah, it's pretty weak, but it knows Mud Slap. And since Constrict does like no damage and Rap does like no damage and can miss, Pidgey ends up getting enough Mud Slaps that I just don't hit that often, and when I do, I'm not dealing much damage. So by the time I make it to Pidgeotto, I'm pretty much out of HP, which is also abysmal on Shuckle, forgot to mention that earlier. So, what did I end up doing? Well, I level up a little bit more, and in terms of the in-battle strategy, I use Rap. Rap works differently than you recall from Generation 1. Now it hits, 15 base power, and every turn until it releases, Pidgey will lose 1 16th of its total health. Anyway, it's still using Mud Slap. I go for Constrict, trying to get as much damage on this Pidgey as possible. Rap has worse accuracy, but that additional damage is helpful, so I will go for Rap once it's released. Eventually, Pidgey actually runs out of Mud Slap. It's only 10 power points. Another difference in Generation 2. Opponents actually have power points. But 22 HP for Pidgeotto isn't bad, especially because I have a Berry equipped, so it's really like 32 HP. But Pidgeotto is quite a bit harder. Gus does 3 damage, and will Rap hit? Yes, that's very good. That's the key. How often can I land my attacks? I have a third of my usual accuracy, similar to hitting a 1-hit KO move, and I have to hit many of them. Luckily, as you can see, I'm getting good luck hitting attacks, especially with Rap. Hitting Rap is so important, but perhaps more important is that first attack was a high roll. Pidgeotto is only doing 2 damage with Gus, and that is significant and really adds up, and why leveling up was so important. So finally, I get a critical hit with Rap, and slowly but surely, I can tell it's going to knock out Pidgeotto. So, level 16, only about 2 hours or so. It wasn't the prettiest battle, but compared to some of our experiences with Brock, this was quite nice. And there really isn't much to talk about before we battle the second gym leader. And as I show some unsuccessful battles, the biggest problem with Bugsy, aside from the fact Kakuna can poison you, is that Scyther uses Fury Cutter. Now Fury Cutter is pretty terrible in this generation, only 10 base power, 90 accuracy. However, Scyther is good attack and it does double every turn. It's been made far more powerful since Generation 2, but since Shuckle takes so long to do anything, Fury Cutter will end up doing very significant damage, and so I need to think of a way around that. Unfortunately, unlike in Red and Blue, there aren't a ton of TMs available to us at this point, so I really either level up, and the only other battle I can have is with this rival number 2, and rival number 2 in Generation 2 is a far, far more difficult battle, than the rival number two that we've come to know and love. And I lost time and again, but finally, I was able to get a decent battle against him. And the way I did it, I took a page out of Faulkner's book, Mud Slap. I don't like using accuracy lowering moves, but it does have super effective damage against Ghastly, so I probably would use it anyway. In fact, I'd have to. It's the only move I have that could actually hit Ghastly. Unfortunately, it used Spite, so I have way less than I'd like for Croconna. I only have three. It does hit me with a water gun. My special defense is excellent, even with it being super effective, not a big deal. 
However, now I need to actually knock this thing out, and yeah, it's gonna take a while. You'll see, even once Croconaw is wrapped, I'm using Wrap Over Constrict, it actually usually does do more damage. Because my attack is so pathetic, the difference between 2 and 3 is actually quite massive, so I'd really like to do 3 damage. Anyway, Croconaw is missing enough, but you can see I'm getting nervous because I'm going to Constrict. This is going pretty well. Well, Croconaw starts to miss a ton, and they end up at 19 HP for Zubat. Zubat is no walk in the park either. It has Bite, and that can be pretty troublesome. The 2 HP is not what I'm worried about. Flinching is, because as you can see, it's going to be very, very close between me and Zubat. So far, so good. No flinches. And Rap is doing his job, and finally, critical hit Constrict. That proved huge. I'm only at 6 HP left. I'm not sure I would have won without that critical hit. But somewhat surprisingly, I've ended up beating Rival 2 before Bugsy. And unfortunately, with my current moves, it just isn't working. I can't Mud Slap Scyther, even with all the withdraws. Fury Cutter does too much damage. My HP is just too little. So, I come up with a different strategy. It requires me to level up a little bit more. And once I'm at level 28, I try battling Bugsy again. Thankfully, Metapod isn't much of a problem, so I can set up. I'm going to go for Wrap, and then I'm going to go for Withdraw, then Mud Slap. That's just for a little bit of an accuracy drop. I'm not going to be dealing much damage, so I might as well let Wrap deal damage and go for Withdraw. When Wrap is released, I go for another Wrap. Metapod's only attack is Tackle. Nothing it can really do. So I'm able to set up perfectly, and now, hopefully, Kakuna cooperates. Now, Kakuna even outspeeds me. I go for Mud Slap and get a critical hit. That's huge. Mud Slap is neutral because Poison Bug. Accuracy drop big because we don't want to get poisoned. Once again, you see Wrap in effect, but this time my main attack is Mud Slap. Kakuna still hits quite a fair bit, but thank goodness I'm not poisoned. And so we've made it to Scyther. And here is why I'm at level 28. We're going to go for Bide. Yes, the TM we get from Brock. We are using all first gym leader TMs in this run. So I go for Rap. It misses. That really is bad. All right, hopefully this does enough. Now I'm going to go for Bide. And it can last two or three turns. Okay. Holy moly, look how much damage that does. But I get a two-turn Bide. Wow. Three HP. By the way, I have a Poison Cure Berry equipped because I was more worried about that. But yeah, Fury Cutter does quite a bit of damage to Shuckle. And thankfully, our strategy can start changing at this point because we've gone from Famine to Feast. After we get through the Ilex Forest, Shuckle can learn Headbutt. But there's another move Shuckle could learn, which I had no idea how overpowered this move is in solo runs. My friends, let me introduce to you Rollout. And I have a good idea for a test run. Let's show you my battle with Whitney. Whitney, the hardest gym leader, some people say, of all time, considering where she is in the game. How will Shuckle, with its puny base 10 attack power, be able to deal with this? Well, I go for Rollout. It's doing very little. That's not surprising, since it only starts at base 30 power. Clefairy does metronome and... <laughs> oh my gosh! It goes for Rollout too! Wow! That is nuts, considering Miltank is known for using that move. Okay, so we've now knocked out Clefairy, only 14 HP loss. How much will we do to Miltank? Nearly everything. It then goes for Milk Drink, and I knock it out. Miltank, yes, it had a miss, but never attacked me. First try against Whitney? What the heck happened? Well, Rollout doubles in power every turn. And I don't mean an additional 30 base power, I mean doubles. So it goes 30, 60, 120, 240, 480. And it actually will get even better. But that won't happen for a little bit. Now it's time to battle the ghost type gym leader, Morty. He's kind of like Agatha Light with confusing moves, sleeping moves, and curse, which is very frustrating. How will Shuckle deal with it in its first attempt? Well, right off the bat, Ghastly goes for Curse. This is the worst thing. It's going to deal one quarter of my HP every turn until I switch out. We cannot switch out, even though we have other Pokemon for HM purposes. It is against the rules. 
so I've probably lost. All right, I guess I need it not to use Curse to win. But if I'm gonna lose, might as well use Rollout. It could be funny to see it one-hit KO some of the Pokemon. Haunter missed with Hypnosis, that was pretty nice, and it did decent damage. It then used Mimic and mimicked Rollout, that's pretty funny, and by that point, I have fainted. So, essentially, I don't think I have a chance to win if I get a curse, so I'm gonna need Ghastly not to do that. Alright, let's try again. Please no- Oh, come on. Well, this time I decided to go for Rollout, just see how that would work, and it actually almost won it KO's Ghastly. Wow, its defense is terrible. I am overleveled, though. It then goes for Lick, thankfully no Paralysis, and... Obviously, Rollout will knock it out, and now we're on our third turn. That actually could knock out Haunter. All right, Hypnosis miss, and... Oh my goodness, could we win? You may notice, Curse doesn't take effect if I knock out a Pokemon. So, there is a chance. Another Hypnosis miss! Holy moly, and... Wow. If we hit, we're going to beat Morty on my second try. What is this? Holy moly, this was not supposed to go like this. This was supposed to be in like the Abra No Special Moves tier, not the Ghastly tier. Man, Shuckle, or should I say Rollout Shuckle, is absolutely rolling. But um, um, bad. Anyway, now is where we have some tough gyms ahead. Rollout is resisted both by Chuck, who is the fighting type gym leader, and by Jasmine, the steel type gym leader. We could actually battle Price before either of them, but if you want to go quickest, it is fastest to battle Chuck right now. It's probably going to go poorly and I'll go battle Price, but let's try it. Okay, well, Rollout is not going to deal enough damage, I don't think, so let's go for Bide. That was kind of cool we used it before. Let's see if that will work. All right. All right. All right, maybe? Ah, <sighs> just missed. Anyway, it then hits us with a 5-turn Fury Swipes, thanks for that, and we knock it out with Headbutt. Polyrath knows Surf, though. This is probably not going to be a victory, or definitely not. And yeah, that's probably not a good idea. But you know what? What if I used Rollout the whole way? Let's try it. This won't work. Alright, Leer, Rollout's doing nothing, like I expected. Karate Chop Crit, Rollout is still doing nothing. If you're wondering how I just outsped, I have the Quick Claw, which allows me to outspeed 20% of the time. It's kind of useful. Anyway, it goes for Fury Swipes, and will this next Rollout knock it out? Alright, no Quick Claw, so Karate Chop, and oh my gosh. Could I actually win? Alright, no Surf from Polyrath. We get Mind Reader, and no. Okay, well, that was still kind of cool. All right, let's try it again. Okay, it puts me to sleep. All right, we lost. Hey, I outsped again, but just use Surf. Okay, finally. So, yeah, that wasn't working. And the truth is, I should have just gone to Price, but I was being stubborn. And there was a better strategy. Basically, I need one more hit of Rollout against Polyrath, and that's actually kind of simple to do. If I use three Headbutts on Primate, it should allow for a three-hit KO Rollout. Unfortunately, finally you're seeing a rollout miss. It does miss 10% of the time. That's its big drawback. And because of that, it knocks it out in two hits. Because that's not what I want. Mind Reader is fine. I deal barely any damage. And here is where I have a question. How does Hypnosis miss right here? The next move is supposed to ignore accuracy. Now I have a Mint Berry, so it wouldn't have mattered. And yeah, I end up knocking out Polyrath because of that. But it makes no sense. It should be impossible for any move to miss. There's not supposed to be an accuracy check. Are status moves still affected by the intentional 25% chance that they can miss? I'm guessing they are, and that's the explanation. That even though it has infinite accuracy, there is still that dice roll where if it hits the 1 out of 4, it just fails. That's my only explanation, but I've never seen this interaction before. And so if you guys know, let me know. And we won, but the win is definitely overshadowed by that weirdness. Anyway, technically Jasmine is the next gym leader, and I do try battling her, and it went, well, exactly about as well as you may have thought, so let's go battle Price first. And in addition to Price, there's the whole Team Rocket subplot, at least the first half of it, that I can battle, so I'll level up a fair bit, and we'll try again later. Alright, so we're done with Team Rocket stuff, we've leveled up a fair bit, so now it's time to battle Price. And the battle goes kind of how you think it would go, Aurora Beam does nothing, it does take three to knock out Seal, because Seal isn't actually Ice-type, which is kind of why Aurora Beam did little. 
Then Pile of Swine hits me with a critical hit blizzard, and at this point, pretty much victory is assured. Unfortunately, wasn't able to knock out Pile of Swine on my fourth hit. That would have been nice because I wouldn't have to start another rollout versus Dugong. However, none of these Pokemon, despite the fact two of them are water Pokemon, they don't actually have water moves, and my special defense is good enough. I'm overleveled. Yeah, this was kind of a joke. So that's cool. Jasmine, though, I battled like, I'd have to say over 25 times. Because there's not really much I can do right now. There aren't any new TMs I can learn. I can't learn any more moves via level up. My options are either try and level up more and more, or try and develop a strategy slowly but surely, experiment with different moves, different held items, see what works and what doesn't. The biggest problem is twofold. The first Magnemite has both Thunder Wave and Supersonic, and if I'm either paralyzed or confused, the battle is over. So a lot of resets happen there. But even Steelix, I mean, the fact it has Iron Tail, it can miss 25% of the time, but it's super effective. It has great attack. It's just not easy for Shuckle. And this is what I kind of felt like every gym leader would be like, but it's taken until Jasmine for Shuckle to really get stuckle. So what was the genius strategy I came up with without having to level up too much? Well, basically, Magnemite needs to use something like Supersonic and Miss. That works well. I go for Dig. It's double super effective. Even with my puny attack, it's a 1-8 KO. Now we have to deal with Steelix. And here's the strategy I finally settled on, although it does require some luck. I'm going to go for Buy. It needs to hit with both Iron Tails and not get a critical hit or a defense drop. And I need a berry so I have enough HP for Magnemite. Oh yeah, I also need a two-turn bide because otherwise it will knock me out. I get all those things. And that's the battle with the berry. Magnemite can't use Sonic Boom to knock me out, which is what was happening. So as long as I can hit with Dig, and I do, my half hour long quest to beat Jasmine finally came to an end. And the berry really was the big difference maker. Once I thought about that, instead of using a quick claw or something else, it kind of started to work out, but I lost so many runs to getting bad luck with Iron Tail. Just one of those really frustrating spots where I really don't have too much to do other than pick a strategy and hope it works. Thankfully, it's not the Elite Four I can just save before, but we're really close, in fact, after we do a bunch more Team Rocket stuff, and so we're going to level up more. And then I have to battle Rival 3, not nearly as many rival fights in this game. I don't actually have a ton to say about this fight. It took me a few tries, but that's because I was trying to do other things other than using Rollout. And it turns out, no, just use Rollout. The big difference, I guess, between wins and losses is Golbat. It loves to use Confuse Ray, and so that can mess me up. And Feraligator doesn't know any good water moves, so it's actually not that big a deal. Magnemite you think would be a sticking point, but usually I have a max powered or close to it rollout by that point. And in my losses, I'd make it all the way to Sneasel, and I'd usually lose because I'd miss and then Curse would knock me out. But this time I don't get a Curse. And so we beat the second to last rival. There's only four mandatory battles in this entire game, if you can believe it. And we only have one more major battle before the Elite Four, Claire. And Claire, especially the trainers in her gym, were a massive problem because although Dragon Rage is typically terrible, when you have just around 100 HP, it's a 3-hit KO. So once again, my abysmal HP stat, not making things easy. That said, Claire's Pokemon don't actually have Dragon Rage themselves, just all the Pokemon leading up to Claire, and the battle was a heck of a lot easier than I thought it would be as a result. I go for Rollout, I know, shocking, right? And there's even a critical hit Surf. The first Dragonair is Surf, the worst move it could have. I'm still at half HP for Kingdra. But Kingdra, man, that dealt a ton of damage. Rolo comes oh so close to knocking it out, but Claire decides to heal, and thus I get my fifth and max powered rollout to knock out Kingdra. But I'm at 18 HP. Surely there's no way I can beat the rest of Claire's team, right? <laughs> well, Dragonair goes for Thunder Wave and I go for Rest. I don't even have a Mint Berry to wake me up. I don't need it. It's doing, like, no damage. I can just sit there snoozing for the two turns. And then I, I know this will shock you. But guess what move I use? 
it, it was rollout for those of you who didn't see. And uh, I do get paralyzed by Dragon Breath, which I was worried about. But I knock out Dragonair number two on my third rollout. And then Dragonair number three, Dragon Breath still does next to nothing. I hit and yeah, that's eight gems. Now, it still took 13 in-game hours, but be aware of two things. One, I didn't originally intend this as a speedrun or anything. And two, Generation 2, there are so many mandatory battles, over a hundred of them. And I guess now's as good a time as any to mention, Shuckle takes a while to knock out anything. I mean, in gym battles, it's not so bad, but imagine I have to build up rollouts for every single Rattata or whatever. Battles definitely take a lot longer than if I were using nearly anything else. But before we face the Elite Four, we do have one more trainer. I mentioned him earlier, rival number four. And I also mentioned earlier that rollout would get even better. Some of you know what I mean by that, but for those of you who don't, let's take a look at this battle. Now, it's very lucky Sneasel leads off because it can do like nothing, but you'll see I've added a new move to my repertoire, Defense Curl. And this is not the badge boost glitch, that doesn't exist. But there is an intentional combo that if you use Defense Curl and then Rollout, Rollout's power is doubled. So instead of dealing 30, it's 60, then 120, then 240, then 480, then 960 base power against Magneton. Like, come on. Also, this battle, if you notice, I know it's going really fast, but I get like every single troll from paralysis to confusion. I don't attack several times, and yet, I still win. That is how powerful Shuckle's defense plus defense curl and rollout are. But is it going to be enough to take on the Elite Four without saving in between members? Well, let's battle Will and find out. So, we go for Defense Curl, Psychic's not doing much, but you'll see a Confuse Ray. And I'm not going to commentate because, spoiler, I lose this battle. And this was the first hurdle to overcome. Will loves to confuse my Pokemon. And without that stacking rollout damage, even Executor can use Reflect and Leech Seed and just wall me. That's kind of ironic, I'm supposed to be like the ultimate wall. But much of the Elite Four is going to rely on my held items because there are tons of statuses. Pretty much every single one except Bruno love to status me. And in the second battle, you see another thing that can happen. The first Zatu does not use a single Confuse Ray, but it does get a special defense drop. Only 10% chance unlike Gen 1, but it happens. And then I get confused by the second Zatu. After knocking it out, Jinx tries to put me to sleep with Lovely Kiss. Like I said, status is galore. And this is why speed is so paramount in these runs. Having to go second means all these Pokemon get at least an opportunity to use some of these really annoying moves. And speaking of which, after knocking out Slowbro, Executor outspeeds me and goes for Reflect. That's pretty bad. And because my special defense is dropped, Psychic is doing a lot of damage. And it's looking like I'm going to lose until I get that critical hit and win. So this was clearly a lucky victory, but it gives us an idea of what to sort of expect from Will going forward. But if you thought Will was annoying, Koga's whole shtick is raising his evasion and making it hard to hit his Pokemon. Case in point, as I set up my defense curl, Aerado sets up its double team. Thankfully, Rollout is doing great damage, would have been nice to one it KO, but... I do miss, it goes for Giga Drain, it's doing next to nothing, and thankfully it doesn't take too long for me to hit again, and I knock out Ariados. Fortress also sucks because it knows Protect, which can break my rollout chain. Spikes, that's great, I only have one Pokemon, so that does nothing. So it's going to be 480 base power to whatever Pokemon comes in. It's Muck, and notice I don't know what Pokemon Koga is going to use, I'll talk about that in just a second. It goes for Minimize, which really sucks. But I thankfully hit and knock out the muck. Now here's Crobat, double team, not surprised, and okay, I miss. Not a big deal, but hopefully I don't miss too much. Koga's Pokemon also no Toxic. All right, another double team, a miss, okay, and that's what I didn't want, Toxic. Thankfully I hit, but it may be too little too late, especially with that full restore, and oh, okay, that was really fortuitous. 
I do have rest for this very reason, but man, can this fight be frustrating. Anyway, we have a Venomoth, which I think I'll knock out in one hit. The question is, will I hit it? No supersonic, good and good. That is Koga. So I guess I'll expand now on what I mean by not knowing what Pokemon they send out. As far as I'm aware, it's semi-random. I know it's based on type advantages, so the AI is using some sort of calculation. However, I get nearly identical battles, and different Pokemon will come out in different orders. And that's really annoying, because since I don't know what order the Pokemon will be sent out, I can't really use any other strategy other than roll out and hope, which to be fair has worked so far, but will it work against Bruno, who weirdly enough, we have a fighting type gym leader and a fighting type elite 4 member? Pretty sure that's the only time Pokemon has ever done that. Okay, so for Bruno I teach the TM for Earthquake. The reason being, Hitmontop's only move that's going to use is Dig. And Earthquake actually will hit a Pokemon that uses Dig and deal more damage. So that's going to be nice. Of course, I mess up my timing. I go for Defense Curl and then I think about going for Earthquake. But what's the point? So I go for Rollout, I guess. Why not? And then I figure it out. Okay, it's Underground. Now use Earthquake and that dealt some pretty good damage. Better yet, I decide to go for Earthquake again once it resurfaces and I get a critical hit. So that's one Pokemon down. And now here comes Onix. I decide to go for Earthquake and it does fairly decent damage. Rock Slide is not too scary in terms of damage, but it can flinch me. Okay. O okay. No, seriously. Like what in the world was that? Holy moly, what are the odds? Four consecutive flinches? Man, hilariously, this battle drags on for so long that Onyx actually starts using Earthquake, which is because it runs out of Rock Slide. And if you're wondering why I go for Rollout, well, I'm thinking it's going to do a little bit more damage at max power than Earthquake will to the remaining fighting Pokemon. Machamp also has Rock Slide, and looks like I was right, that was pretty decent. Hopefully I can hit again, uh, of course, another flinch. And now it's time to go into speed up mode because the rest of this battle is just awful. Really, it's awful. Basically, I get some unlucky flinches and misses and end up having to go for rest not once, but twice. Meaning I'm essentially just stalling. The plan, as you'll see eventually, is to set up a max powered rollout to knock out the rest of his Pokemon. And my HP ends up getting really, really low. But thankfully, as you'll see, even though we are in the so-called red bar, Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Chan can't really do all that much to me and Rollout, yeah. Rollout does a heck of a lot to them. So that's Bruno. He's not that easy in this game. He's improved quite dramatically, but he's no match for Shuckle with Defense Curl Rollout, apparently. Anyway, if you thought Will and Koga were annoying, Karen as the name suggests, is the worst. Every single one of her Pokemon, except for like Houndoom, has some annoying status move it likes to use. When you have multiple Pokemon, she's really easy, but when you're using one Pokemon, especially a slow Pokemon, she's the worst. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I have no interest narrating this one because it is a very long battle, and spoiler, I end up losing. I know I don't usually commentate like this, but Trust me, as you can see, this is going to take a long time. Essentially, the Umbreon weakens my accuracy by enough that I just simply can't deal enough damage quick enough. And although I'm able to use Rest to get through Umbreon, eventually I'll get through Vileplume as well. It could be scary and it can paralyze me, but the real issue is Gengar. Gengar knows Curse. It can also spite away my rollouts, so that's kind of a problem too. But... The big thing is, if I want to beat Karen, I need a way to knock out this Gengar instantly. If I can do that, the rest of her Pokemon aren't a big deal. Rollout is super effective against both Murkrow and Houndoom, and the Umbreon and Vileplume can't deal enough damage before I use Rest, which is why this battle took so long, and there you go, I lost. And it would take me a very long time to get back to Karen. Essentially, that Will battle that looked kind of lucky, yeah, it was pretty lucky. Basically, my win percentage versus Will is something like, I don't know, 15%, I think. There's just far too many places in that battle something can go wrong. And so I would lose to Will again and again and again. And funny enough, Will, after I beat him, wasn't the only sticking point. 
Through my first 15 attempts, I haven't lost to Koga yet, but I have lost to Bruno twice. That's right, I'm 2 for 15 against Will and 0 for 2 against Bruno. Essentially, Bruno's Pokemon, we saw the issues. They have rock moves, they can flinch, and what you may not have seen before, but I'll show now, Machamp has Cross Chop, a move that has a high critical hit ratio. So even though I've set up a defense curl, that gets ignored, plus it's doing twice as much as usual. Thus far, I haven't resorted to leveling up yet. It is something I'm open to doing if this takes too long. But I can be kind of stubborn. I do like to beat the Elite Four at as low a level as possible. Finally, after losing two attempts to Bruno, I actually get a battle similar to the one you first saw. And so I'm now an even 50-50. And I've made it back to Karen. So I try again. The strategy once again is to knock out Umbreon as quickly as possible. So I go for Defense Curl and try to hit it with Rollout. Thankfully, this time around, it only hits me in total with two Sand Attacks. Every other time it goes for Faint Attack, which is adding up, but I prefer. And thankfully, I end up getting three hits with Rollout consecutively, which is great because I'll be able to knock out whatever comes out next as long as I hit. It's Vile Plume goes for Stun Spore, and ah, uh, that sucks. All right, just trying to hit it with Rollout. Petal Dance is fine; it'll eventually confuse itself. The longer I can stall this out, the better it is. My HP is kind of getting low, so after this Rollout misses, I think I'll go for Rest. Probably should have gone for it early. We just knocked it out, and now please don't use Curse. No. <laughs> Literally the only way I could win is if I hit with every single rollout. Okay, that's one. Now I have to hit another one. Thankfully didn't use flamethrower, I used pursuit, and that's two. Oh my gosh, no way. Oh my god, quick law. Yes! <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I mean, I try not to save to avoid luck, and this is just a luck fest on both sides. It's actually a big reason challenge runs in Generation 2 don't interest me that much, because the Elite Four is so trolly, so I feel like no matter what strategy I plan, if I don't have a Pokemon like Kadabra that just outspeeds and sweeps everything, I'm having to rely on luck myself. It's like every battle is the Agatha Lottery, which, as you guys know, is not my favorite battle in Gen 1. One battle that sometimes isn't so bad, though, is Lance. I'm not quite sure, a lot of flying Pokemon. Am I gonna beat the Elite Four right now? Just like in Red and Blue, he leads off with Gyarados, but Rain Dance wasn't a thing. I go for Defense Curl. Surf, okay, that's dealing pretty decent damage with the Rain Dance. Please hit. Good, another Surf. Okay, that's a two at KO. All right, Aerodactyl's coming out next. Maybe Quick Claw, no, please don't flinch. Good, and all right, so that's Aerodactyl. One of the level 47 Dragonite, this one is the Thunder Dragonite. Oh, of course I'm paralyzed. Come on, at least I hit, but this is not looking good. 22 HP and paralyzed. Plus I have one more rollout to go, I can't even use rest. All right, well Charizard, I'm not too worried about ordinarily, and the rain of course stops and, oh, I survive. And I'm paralyzed. Come on, Quickla? No. All right, well, that stinks. Well, luckily, the very next attempt, I make it right now. I'm kidding. I don't make it anywhere close to Lance. I barely make it back to Karen. Eventually, I realize I'm missing a lot of ranges. There's a lot of things happening that if I just leveled up a little bit more, it would be better. It's kind of like pick an undesirable alternative. Do I either try for a very luck-based strategy at a lower level or level up just a little bit more and remove a lot of the luck? So eventually, I decide to level up a little bit more not to say as soon as I did that, the battles were easy. Will still is very, very difficult. Even as my level climbs into the 60s, I'm still routinely losing to Will. So far at level 64, I've yet to even make it past Koga. Yeah, Koga beat me for once. He was able to stall out all my rollouts and then I can't really do anything anymore. Finally, the Will luck starts to go my way though. I get a battle where I get a Confuse Ray, but I don't hit myself in Confusion. No special defense drop, no reflect from Executor, Lovely Kiss misses from Jinx, I don't miss and get the max power against Slowbro, and now all that's left is the final Zatu. Psychic turn one I want to see, Rollout is good, Confuse Ray I don't want to see, and I don't want to see that either. Nor do I want to see it healing, that kind of sucks. 
but roll out and there's the quick claw so okay we have a will battle can we make a run out of this hopefully koga doesn't evade me into oblivion let's find out all right defense curl like always it's gonna go for double team that's unsurprising unfortunately though i'm having trouble hitting the ariados and the scary thing about that is that it knows baton pass no, not Fortress with all those evasion moves. No, it can't deal much damage, but I do so little damage to Fortress that... Oh, okay. Well, it's not looking too bad. Hopefully, I can get a few more hits in. And... Oh, wow. That was actually really great. Okay. Cancel the concern. This is looking pretty good now. And we outspeed 1 KO of Muck. This is very, very good. I like to see Psychic, and I like to see that. Okay, who's going to get the max power rollout, though? Looks like it's Ariados, and I miss. That's not a big deal. And a Baton passes. That's kind of whatever. Okay, I have to use another rollout anyway. Crobat can be so annoying with double team. Please just hit. Ooh, Wing Attack I like, and I hit. Very good. Toxic I like. I know that's weird to say, and very good. Wow. Okay, wow, we beat Koga pretty easily. That was actually one of the quickest Koga battles I've had so far. But now I have a pretty bad record against Bruno, all things considered. Can I get some decent Machamp luck? Well, you can see I've abandoned my Earthquake strategy. I'm now going to use a bunch of Defense Curls. Actually, the way Generation 2 works with stat maximization, I can only use a few. I think it's three before Shuckle's defense actually hits the game's maximum. And so even though I should be able to use more defense curls, it'll say my defense didn't rise. Kind of a weird thing about Gen 1 and 2. Now the one concern with Hitmontop is that if it keeps using Dig, I'm going to run out of rollouts because it's my only attacking move now. However, I should admit I'm being a little sneaky with those defense curls. Yes, they're to boost rollout too, or one of them is. But the AI is switching to Pursuit because it realizes my defense is so high that it should use a special attack against my special defense that it would do more damage. But that's exactly what I want it to do so I can build up a rollout chain and hopefully almost knock out the Onyx. I actually want him a champ, but man, that stinks. I mean, I'll knock it out this turn, but I wanted max power for him a champ. Beautiful. And now we just have to hope for not too many flinches. All right, let's build up a rollout. A miss is good to see. Okay. Healing. I like to see that because this is a four-turn rollout and it does knock out Machamp. Who's going to be hit by the max-powered rollout? It's Hitmonlee. And yeah, that did nothing. It doesn't actually have a special attack. And now we just have to worry about Hitmonchan. Not too big a deal. It just is going to use the elemental punches. It seems Fire Punch is its preference. I guess because I'm part bug type. I don't know. Anyway, it takes one, two, and three rollouts to knock it out. So we have made it for the first time at our current level to Karen. Being at a higher level isn't going to make too big a difference on her, to be honest. But I'm hoping if we get past her, it may make Lance a little bit better. But first things first, we got to get past Karen. Let's do it. All right, so set up a defense curl. Sand attack fail. 25% chance of that. Very good. Faint attack, like to see that, okay. Sand attack, don't like to see that. At least I'm hitting. Confuse Ray, really don't like to see that, and yeah, we knew that was gonna happen. All right, so let's play how long am I gonna hit myself in confusion? And wouldn't you know, a sand attack, of course. Finally, I hit the Umbreon. Faint attack, I like to see. And okay, so we have a third turn rollout if we actually hit with it. Vile Bloom again, and no. No, at least Stun Spore missed, but no. And I hit with Rolo. You may notice I'm actually faster than Vileplume. Leveling up, good for something. I come very close to knocking it out, but unfortunately, the sand attacks have caught up to me, and then Vileplume uses Moonlight. Finally, I realize, okay, I could play this risky or I could play the smart. So I'm going to go for rest. I don't use Rollout in my sleep. Vileplume ends up paralyzing me while I miss with Rollout again and again and again. Starts to go for Petal Dance. Thankfully, finally, I start building up a chain, and I knock it out. And this is the moment of truth. If we don't get a curse, I think we could win. Lick? Yes, I think we win. Houndoom is not going to do much damage if I can just hit it. No. I even missed. I was paralyzed, and Roar went last because of negative priority. 
All right, I think I only need two to knock it out. Flamethrower's not doing anything. Please hit okay. All right, Roar is fine. Max Potion, please hit. Yes! Okay, finally! All right, we have one Pokemon left. Please hit Murkrow. Please hit Murkrow. Please hit... Yes! This has been one of my longer Elite Fours in a very long time. And uh, I don't think it's necessarily going to be over here. I still don't have a great strategy for the champion. But I'm here, so might as well battle him. Let's go. All right, this time Gyarados does something a little different. It goes for Surf right away. Interesting. And now it goes for Rain Dance. That's kind of neat. And no way. All right, guys, we have to win. That was clutch. All right, Aerodactyl again. Okay, it missed with Rock Slide. So clutch. All right, you know what? Both are 90%. Okay, fine. It's fine. All right, Rock Slide hit, no flinch. Okay. No way, no way. What is this, Gen 1? Two crits? Okay, you know what? Let's just see how this goes. All right, Charizard, an interesting choice, and Flamethrowers, no. Are you kidding me? Of all the things to happen, a burn? <laughs> what? Three critical hits. What's going on? I don't even have time to process this thunder. Not to... Oh my... No way. No way. All right. You know what? Blizzard. Okay. Didn't freeze. Can't. I'm burnt. And this should... Yeah, it does, obviously. What's going on? Okay. We got the big Dragonite now. Level 50. All right. What's it gonna... No way. This was something else. <laughs> I don't know what to say about this one. I mean, you can look at all the points I got lucky, but I got burned by Flamethrower. That's a 10%. You know what? This happened? I don't even know. I'm speechless. You know how many of these I've done? This has got to be at least number 50. And yeah, that means that I have a backlog and more are on the way, but I don't know. I don't know. The game's not over, though. That would be a pretty anticlimactic way for the game to end, but we still have eight Kanto Gyms, and then we have Red. So, let's quickly talk about each Gym. I started off with Lieutenant Surge because you dock in Vermilion, and this Gym took a really long time, in the sense that it was a first try victory that just took forever, because Surge's Pokemon, get this, no Thunder Wave and Double Team. It was a first try victory, the strategy is pretty much going forward, defense curl rollout. And it just keeps getting interrupted either by paralysis or missing, and so it takes a heck of a lot longer than it otherwise should have. You notice, not much damage is being dealt to me, and if I ever did get low in health, I could rest. And that's why doing play-by-play -play may not be the best. Huh? Huh? Anyway, we've beaten Lieutenant Surge. Now, Sabrina was one of my few losses, and I'm not going to show that battle because I ran out of rollouts and actually had to faint myself due to struggle. Yeah, that was awful, and it took five ever. And what's the reason I ran out of power points? Espeon uses sand attack. Of course, everything in this game needs to troll me. However, once I get on a roll, and that's not a pun intended, I just keep hitting everything, and there's only three Pokemon. That's right. It's only Alakazam and Mr. Mime. All I have to do is find a way not to waste 20 power points for three Pokemon. I have Sandstorm just in case this time, because Sandstorm will eventually knock out things that don't recover. But yeah, frustrating experience, not difficult, just annoying. Erica is also a bit of a longer battle, but this time I played a little too cautious. I get an unlucky miss, and actually a lucky sleep powder miss from Tangela. And then I decide to use Rest. This was so unnecessary. I probably wouldn't have even been in Red Bar if I never rested. But then I'm able to get a rollout going and I don't get any more misses. And so I'm able to knock out all four of Erica's Pokemon. Now here's Janine. Her Pokemon are super low level, but there you go. Confusion. They also have Double Team. Thankfully, I get kind of lucky after hitting myself in Confusion a few times. I'm able to get a nice little rollout streak going, 
That said, I don't want to KO Weezing, which is unfortunate because I'm not able to knock out every single one of her Pokemon. But the truth of the matter is, it could take a long time if I have to resort to Sandstorm. But since I have Rest, there's really nothing her Pokemon can do. They can just stall and they can't recover. So eventually, Sandstorm, which in this generation, by the way, deals 1 8th instead of 1 16th. I don't use it in this battle, I don't need to. But that and Rest are always options. Anyway, thankfully, don't miss too much. There's another gym. Now, Misty, I play incredibly reckless, and the fact I won is kind of shocking. Golduck does decent damage with Surf, but Psych Up actually copies my defense curl, which is bad. <laughs> However, Rollout is so powerful, it's able to eventually knock out such shocking contenders, really, as Quagsire and Lapras without much of an issue. And then with Starmie, yeah, I would have lost, but I can just stall and use Rest. Then wake up, and sure I'm confused, but I don't hit myself in confusion, and it's only a 2 at KO. It was close. Had I hit myself in confusion, maybe I would have lost. But hey, it worked, so that's another one down. But the gym leader you probably think is going to give me the most trouble is Brock. Ground resists rollout, strong defense, big issue, right? Well, I have another trick up my sleeve. You see, I pick up Hidden Power, and I never know what it's going to be. I just test it out. Happens to be Hidden Power Grass. And while I don't always outspeed, it one-hit KOs every single one of Brock's Pokemon. And truth be told, by the way, Defense Curl Rollout would have worked. However, I did want to try something else, so at least this worked. And finally, hilariously, he's 7th. I never battle Blaine 7th anymore. Yeah, Defense Curl. It does take two rollouts to knock out Macargo because of Curse. But, yeah. And, yeah. The Kanto Gym Leaders are definitely a little bit of a letdown after the Elite Four. However, Blue can be difficult, otherwise known as Rival Fievel the Eighth. I'm kidding about that. He's not known as that. However, he does have a similar team to Rival Fievel, just good. So this battle's the first one in a long time I'm actually kind of nervous about. Like always, he leads with Pidgeot, and like always, Wing Attack doesn't do very much, although it is base 60 power. Of course, we go for Defense Curl Rollout. You'll notice I have Quick Claw equipped. Nothing better to really have for Shuckle, so just leaving Quick Claw and hoping for those outspeeds. In my opinion, the best strategy for average battles. But this isn't a good swap right on. I am able to outspeed and Fury Attack misses and wow. If you didn't believe me when I said rollout would be fine for Brock, yeah, that one hit KO a right on. Fourth hit, but still. Next we get Gyarados and I'm worried about what it's going to do, but I get the Quick Claw and I outspeed. So that is all five of my rollouts. They've all hit and that is three Pokemon down. Now, Executor decides to be trolly and go for Leech Seed. Even with my HP being low, with my level being high, it's still gaining back some HP. Thankfully, as I go for Rollout, it goes for Solar Beam. Between Leech Seed and the Solar Beam, I'm actually down to almost a third of my health, but there's only two Pokemon left, and two more of my strongest rollouts if they hit. Arcanine, get the Quick Claw outspeed. So now it's all up to the final Pokemon, Alakazam, Reflect was the best thing it could have done, but it's not enough. Not with 900 plus base power of rollout. Sorry, Alakazam. I had no idea going into this run how overpowered Defense Curl rollout would be. And man, am I learning that if I ever want to do a challenge run in Generation 2 again, I need to pick something that doesn't have rollout. That being said, we now have one of the toughest trainers in Pokemon history. Red. And in my opinion, just if I can for a second, Red is also another reason I don't love doing gold and silver runs, because there's so many Pokemon who can make it to this point, but Red is at such a high level, which is good, that you can't just use a level 100 like Caterpie and hope you'll be fine. Red has high enough level Pokemon that level 100 doesn't actually mean all that much, so you actually need some sort of a strategy to defeat him. That being said, unlike the Elite Four, Red is a single trainer. And so there's no way I can avoid luck. 
I can reset till I get a battle I really like, but that also feels like I'm manipulating the run in some way. If I win, I win, but that's definitely an if because I don't know how this is going to go. Let's find out. All right, Pikachu goes for Charm. That would have been kind of annoying, but it failed. Thank goodness. Defense Curl and Thunder hits and paralyzes. Hooray! Well, eventually, I knock out the Pikachu with Rollout. But even after a Quick Claw outspeed, yeah, I'm not even doing half damage to Blastoise. And Surf is doing a, a fair bit. See how actually even leveled Pokemon shockingly deal way more damage than ones that are massively underleveled compared to me. So you might wonder what happens if Charm actually hits? That turns Pikachu into a 3 hit KO, but thankfully, Pikachu only connects with a single Thunder. I've switched to Leftovers, and you'll see I end up gaining back pretty much all my HP for Blastoise. Blastoise decides to go for Rain Dance rather than go for Surf straight away, and how much will Rollout do? Everything. Okay, crit. But that's really good. Now, I genuinely have no idea how I outsped this Snorlax, but I did, and it's a max power defense curl rollout. No chance. So three Pokemon down. And Venusaur, I don't know how big a problem it's going to be. Sets up Sunny Day. All right, I go for rollout. It does like nothing. Solar Beam's doing good damage. Rollout, maybe a three hit KO? Still Solar Beam? No. And... Ooh, this could be bad, and I get a miss. Hopefully, I can survive this and rest. Critical hit. No, that's not good. And try as I might, I could never make it farther than that in the battle. Like I said in the Elite Four, the order Red sends out his Pokemon is somewhat random. Pikachu is always first, and he always likes to send out Blastoise second. But sometimes I get Venusaur, and sometimes I'd get Charizard, and sometimes I get Snorlax. The third Pokemon was pretty random. However, I'd made it to the fourth Pokemon a couple times, but never passed the fourth Pokemon, at least not at my current level. So time to level up, right? Well, I want to try one thing. You see, in Celadon City, you can get the TM for Curse. And Curse for non-ghosts, it'll lower your speed and raise your attack and defense, which could offset Charm. So I want to see what a battle will look like if I use Curse. I'm going to stay at level 74, and if it doesn't work, we'll level up a bunch. All right, well, Pikachu uses Charm. It hits. I go for Defense Curl. No surprises there. Thunder Miss is good, and now I start setting up Curse. Thunder then hits. Not once. Not twice. But three with the Paralysis consecutive times. Thankfully, Thunder Misses had it critted. I may have lost right there and then, but it's time to use Rest. Now, because I have leftovers, obviously no Mint Berry equipped, no Sleep Talk, I've gotten rid of that. And Thunder, of course, hits not once, not twice, but again three consecutive times. Running out of Power Points, though, and I go for another Curse. Can we make it four consecutive? Yes, we can! And you know what? Let's go for five. Five! Five Thunder hits! <laughs> Actually, why am I laughing? That's bad. Thankfully, I have enough HP, I go for Rest again. And at this point, we start playing a game of cat and mouse, no pun intended. Pikachu has to switch to Thunderbolt, which doesn't do as much damage. And my plan is to maximize my attack, so plus 6 in attack, whilst having as much HP as possible. Unfortunately, Pikachu realizes what I'm doing and starts going for Charm. So after going for yet another rest and Pikachu using a couple more Charms, I'm at plus 5 attack overall and decide, alright, let's go for Rollout. How much will this do to Pikachu? Everything. All right, that's a one-hit KO. Blastoise goes for Whirlpool, which misses. Will this knock it out? Close, close. All right, Blastoise, go for Whirlpool. Yes. Unfortunately, though, I miss with Rollout, so it's going to get another opportunity. And it goes for Rain Dance. All right, crazy thing here. Depending on what we get, this Rollout might last the rest of the battle. Unfortunately, Snorlax was not what I wanted to see. And Amnesia is fine. Rollout. Okay, three quarters is good. Body Slam does less than leftovers will heal. And I miss again. All right, we're getting a lot of misses. Body Slam still not an issue. And we hit. All right, can this one last the rest of the battle? Venusaur goes for Giga Drain. No sunny day. And not quite, but it goes for Synthesis. 
Now we just have Charizard and Espeon, two of the best Pokemon for me to face. Oh, and we got Charizard. Don't burn, don't burn. Fire Spin Miss is good enough. Wow, are we going to beat Red at level 75? Espeon goes for Reflect. If we hit, we win. Wow. Man, this went way different than I thought. I thought I'd be spamming Toxic and rest in sandstorm and slowly but surely knocking out pokemon i didn't realize i'd be setting up for rollouts and just destroying everything anyway that's all for this video thanks for watching if you enjoy generation 2 or other generation challenges leave a like and a comment let me know i'm always curious to see if people like just gen 1 or they want other generations as well and that's all take care